Hello YouTube, the Badger here. So I took apart my um, XTAR VP4 Plus charger because I was sort of curious to see what was inside that was costing me $70. Uh, and there's not $70 worth of cost in these things. It's probably more like, say, $20 or $25 at most. But let's go through some of the details. So anyway, um, you'll notice up here we have a MOSFET, uh, we have a resistor, we have an inductor, uh, we have a couple of protection diodes, we have a resistor, a capacitor, and a MOSFET. And if you look across here, you'll see all that stuff duplicated again, and again, and again. <laughs> So that's your that's your um, uh, power supply and discharge circuitry for each one of the cells. So let's go back over to uh, this one here. Um, as good as one good as one as any. So right here you've got come on camera pull that bad boy in. Focus there you go. So right here you have a surface mount MOSFET. Um, and if I get in really close you can see the part number on it. There we go. A little bit more. There we go. So it looks like a 9929B. Um, I forget whose logo that A symbol is. Uh, but anyway, it's a Chinese brand MOSFET. If I remember right. Okay, uh, focus again, camera. There we go. So ignore the buzzer. You know, that's you know common for everything. It doesn't really apply to the circuit. So you have an inductor. You have a couple of uh, diodes here that are for reverse protection. You have a 15 ohm resistor and a capacitor. Uh, and they make up a DC power supply. So the supply voltage, uh, you know, 12 volts, which is too much for any particular cell, needs to be stepped down to whatever it is, and you can see that moving. That's not cool. Um, it needs to be stepped down to whatever voltage that cell needs. Uh, so in the case of, like, say, uh, you know, a, a NICAD or nickel metal hydride cell, you need, like, about 1.2 volts. Whereas, you know, for full charge, whereas like, say, uh, a lithium ion cell, you need more like 4.2 volts. So this one little power supply needs to adjust itself uh, for whatever the cell actually needs. So this is an adjustable DC to DC power supply, you know, i.e. MOSFET, a few other small components, inductor, and so on. Um, and uh, that is going to basically track slightly higher than whatever the cell's voltage is. Uh, so like, for, for example, um, a lithium ion cell is probably your best example of this. Uh, if you were to uh, output 4.2 volts uh, in this little DC to DC power supply and your cell was, say, like at 2.5 volts, well, you're going to generate a voltage difference there that's quite significant, enough to probably reduce, you know, 4 or 5 amps. And we know for a fact that uh, this little guy can only produce 2 amps out per channel, you know, at least on cell 1 and cell 4. Cell 2 and 3, those are 1 amp. Uh, anyway, so you've got to be able to adjust the output voltage so that it tracks with the uh, voltage of the cell um, because this is a constant current power supply. So it's going to want to try to deliver 2 amps pretty consistently all the time. And the way you do that is the output voltage uh, of this little uh, DC to DC converter needs to be a small percentage higher than the cell's voltage at any point in time. So the uh, control electronics, which are over here in this little guy, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute, are watching that stuff happen. And uh, so you always want to, you know, let, let's pretend for a second that the cell's at three volts. So we want like say 3.2 volts coming out of here so we always see two amps. That's not real numbers, I'm just making that up. All right, so the, uh, but that's the idea. You, you just want to have your, your little DC to DC power supply generate slightly more voltage than the cell's voltage. So you always have a, a current sink into the cell that's always going to average about two amps for cell one and cell four, and about one amp for cell two and cell three. All right, so the next thing is you have this uh, one ohm resistor and you have a MOSFET. Uh, so essentially what's happening here is uh, the MOSFET's an on-off switch. It doesn't do anything else. Uh, it's getting pulsed on and off, and that's about it. Uh, and, you know, with a uh, lithium ion cell at 4.2 volts, with a 1 ohm resistor across it, that's going to be about 4.2 amps. And we know that this thing won't discharge at 4.2 amps. It'll only do about 2 amps. So, Anyway, uh, this resistor gets turned on and off rapidly, or rather this MOSFET gets turned on and off rapidly, so that the MOSFET uh, is only applying current across the resistor for a period of time, not, you know, 100% of the time. And as a result, it keeps the total current down. Uh, uh, this has got a silver band on it, which means it's like, um, um, whatever it is, extremely accurate. It's got like 0.001% um, accuracy on it. 
Uh, you know, so an extremely predictable resistor value, uh, which is important because you need to be able to measure amp hours or milliamp hours specifically for this charger. So with a very, very consistent resistor and then being able to measure the voltage drop across it, that little guy over there, which is probably an STM32, um, has got several analog to digital converters on it, is able to monitor that voltage drop across any one of the resistors and then it has a, a pretty darn accurate idea of what the resistance is of this guy. So basic Ohm's law, you know, voltage divided by current, or voltage equals current times resistance, uh, or voltage, uh, you know, basically the voltage across this guy divided by one ohm is gonna tell you how much current is flowing at any point in time. And then you've got time, right? Because that's how you get amp hours. Uh, so if this guy had one amp across it from the time that the cell was fully charged, the time it was fully discharged, and it took exactly one hour, then you know that the cell is a one amp hour or 1,000 milliamp hour cell. So pretty basic stuff as well there. All right, so let's move up to a few other things here. All right, so um, uh, you have this little 8-pin uh, chip here. Uh, you have some resistors, a few small MOSFETs, things like that. Uh, this is all electronics around that uh, 3S charging port right there. So this is your charging circuitry, basically. And, and these two resistors... Uh, these are going to be current dumps, um, so that is, what value is that? Yeah, so those are red, brown, black, or 18 ohm resistors, uh, and they're like 5 watt resistors, so, you know, if a cell were to get overcharged, all you got to do is turn on a MOSFET, and you can shunt that excess voltage across the resistor, and, you know, bring down the cell voltage for any particular cell. All right, uh, over here, this is your uh, charging port for, you know, like your phone or whatever and uh, through a capacitor, probably that guy, and that little inductor, and you know this little guy down here. Um, you basically have a DC to DC power supply that's going to take the uh, 12 volts in that comes into this port and convert it down to 5 volts for USB charging. And that's pretty much all that does. Um, uh, this is probably a filter cap, or maybe this one is, and that one is, uh, probably this one is, is the filter cap for that 12 volt in. Um, over here is your diagnostic port, uh, so probably that cap and that MOSFET and a few other support electronics here are specific to that. So uh, you want to be able to uh, do a couple different things. One of them is, is to be able to apply a current to a cell uh, and then measure the resistance. Um, so right here, probably that's what that little guy's doing. That little surface mount, whatever this one watt resistor. So that's probably for measuring uh, current across the cell, and then you can measure, you can calculate for the cell voltage or I mean, sorry, for the uh, cell's internal resistance. And then, of course, you know, you leave that stuff off and now you can measure the cell's voltage directly, um, you know, back over here with one of the analog to digital converters that it's got. Okay, over here, um, some of this has to do with uh, diagnostics. And so that's probably what this little guy does, uh, you know, for cell diagnostics. And this little guy uh, is probably part of this little uh, power supply circuit. So you've got a couple of inductors. Um, what exactly they produce? I don't know. I haven't measured the the, the voltages that these produce, but um, these guys and that MOSFET, they're all part of another power supply section for something. You, you know, may, maybe this is producing like 3.3 .3 volts. Uh, you know, for the uh, for the STM32. I honestly don't know. Oh, STM32. Sorry, but that's what they're doing. Th this is just a this is just a little switching power supply in here. Nothing really special, rocket science or anything like that. All right, let's flip this board over. Caught my towel. All right. So on the back side, it's not really very exciting. Uh, as soon as this thing focuses, so the uh, the tabs in each one of the MOSFETs. Come on, camera, focus. So that tab, you can see it runs through to where that tab is, and so on and so forth, across all four of them. So the uh, tabs on the MOSFETs are all on the ground plane. Um, and then, you know, there's the four legs of the MOSFETs, and then right here and right there are the two legs for that large, uh, you know, 10-watt resistor. Uh, so anyway, uh, basically it's taking the uh, positive pole of each cell and grounding it out to the ground backplane, uh, you know, through a resistor and a MOSFET to uh, be able to measure the uh, voltage drop across the resistor so that you can measure amp draws, which I've already talked about. Uh, don't really know what this little guy does. You know, something support electronics because the uh, CPU is right here. So I don't know what that guy does. Some, something important, some comparator or whatever. Uh, same thing up here. So that's an LM324. 
Um, that probably has something to do with uh, cell comparison on the balance port because the balance port is right there. And then you've got this uh, craptastic ribbon cable. So they didn't put a JST connector on here. You know, um, this uh, pin placement is exactly probably they originally had one on there, and then they said, "Oh, hey, we can save cost by taking this out." But uh, this pin placement is 1.5 millimeters across. So a JST 1.5 millimeter connector would be perfect here. Instead, they eliminated that and soldered this ribbon cable in instead, which then goes down to the board here where you've again got everything soldered down rather than probably what had some kind of a um, you know connector on it which would have been better you know this this saved them a couple pennies from when they first developed this thing because these things say uh, yeah there it is it's right there you know they were originally developed in 2017 and they haven't changed anything on them since then so this is a three-year-old design <laughs> other than you know how can we cut corners you know like uh, get rid of the cable that used to have connectors on either end of it. All right, so the uh, back side of the LCD is not very interesting. I'm not going to bother showing you that. Other than the ribbon cable, let's flip that over. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing you can tell, so you've got a gazillion pins across the top of the LCD, is that this is not, um, this LCD doesn't have onboard smarts. You basically just have all the array lines going into the LCD and that's it. And then down here, as soon as I get a focus, there we go. Uh, like the uh, CPU, um, you can see that there is no part number on it. But by virtue of the fact of the kind of LCD is, uh, you know, that, that this isn't a smart LCD, it has no I2C interface, I think it is, anything like that. Obviously, this is a dumb LCD, and so it needs an LCD driver, which is what that is. And then it's got a couple of, uh, you know, TTL support electronics to it there and there, uh, and probably like... Uh, you know, these little MOSFETs and things, they probably do things like turn on backlighting. You know, they're probably nothing more than that. And then, of course, uh, you know, for switches and stuff, you know, there's going to be like some resistors on them. But, uh, th you know, one of these guys might be acting, being that they're uh, they're not really anything special. Um, they are 74HC14, or yeah, 1640s rather. I don't remember what that part number is, but uh, I don't think they're MUXs or anything. Um, but, you know, they're basically uh, just some TTL level control chips, nothing really special. So maybe that's what they're about. So that could be exactly what they're about. So probably this is like a 3.3 volt uh, chip and probably the signals that are coming into that thing, IO signals from the main CPU are like, say, 5 volt logic level. So maybe these guys are provi providing some kind of a buffer circuit for that. That's quite possible. Anyway, not really much exciting there to see. Uh, it's pretty basic stuff. There's a couple things that I would like to have seen better. Uh, let's go back over to one of those. So, um, it would not have been very hard at all. Come on, camera, focus. Focus on the MOSFET. There you go. It would not have been very hard to put a heat sink on here. You know, you've got the screw hole there. Uh, how about stick a vertical f set of fins on there so that this thing can dump heat? Same thing around this resistor. Just, just put uh, a piece of aluminum around it. Uh, with some thermal glue underneath the thing so you can just glue it down so that that resistor can radiate heat better otherwise you know right here in the board is where all your heat is produced when you're discharging uh, and then when you're charging it's more um, down here at this resistor so this is a 15 ohm uh, 5 watt resistor on the board for channel 1 and channel 4 which can charge at 2 amps and then um, here you can see yeah, come on camera Bring it in, there we go. So it's still a 15 ohm resistor, R150, but now it's a 1 watt resistor. So, you know, this is a 1 amp channel versus a 2 amp channel. Otherwise, the electronics are identical. Uh, there is no difference in it between them. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, this is the other hot spot right there at those resistors, you know, for current limiting so that you don't, uh, you don't push too much current in the channel and, you know, burn out your uh, control electronics, your, you know, your little DC to DC power supply. That's pretty much all there is to it. So, yeah, it could have used something at those resistors and obviously at this MOSFET and this resistor to help radiate heat better and then of course um, you know a little fan right there in the shell so that uh, heat can move around but that's not there oh well so yeah they cut corners not the best they could have done